You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. Hi, guys. I'm Sean Taylor, a.k.a. Night Fury. And that is right. The number one racer in the United States is here today <laughs> with us to have a candid conversation about licensing, the past events he's been to, and how the entire environment could be changing, could be kind of morphing. But special thanks to all of you guys for listening in today. Thank you so much. Um, if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com and upload that question. Also, if you found the show useful, valuable, or it's ever helped you, please leave us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, special thanks to Videoblocks. If you need copyright-free music, you need copyright-free video, some B-roll segues, transitions, motion graphics, whatever, Check out videoblocks.com forward slash drone 2016 to save $100 on segues, transitions, aerials. You can also upload your aerials to that site and sell them as well. It's a really cool setup. You've got to check it out. Videoblocks.com forward slash drone 2016. Well, Sean, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, no, it's awesome having you out <laughs> here. I love having like a training and being like, Sean, come over to the field really quick. Yeah, like, yeah, you know? yeah. It's, it's cool. Yeah, it was a blast. You know, you had you had your student there and I got to rip up the, 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 course. the, 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 the line of sight course there for a little bit. That was cool. That's way cool. Oh, man, you set the new record on that course. You know, we thought, we thought with the Inspire 24 seconds around that course, that was good. But you destroyed that. First shot was what, like 10 seconds. <laughs> Second one was like 9.7 seconds and then like a barrel roll around the tunnel to go through it again. Yeah, it was amazing. So. Thanks, man. No, it was good times. Good times. Definitely. So tell me, what are you seeing in the racing industry? I know at DRL Hawaii, I've talked to a couple of the organizers there. I know there was a local race and a couple other upcoming races. Yeah. And since, you know, 107 has kind of come out, what are you seeing? Are you seeing a change? Are you seeing a transition? Yeah, well, uh, uh, so... It's it's funny. I, I uh, I'm not. I don't really stay up on the laws and stuff so much. Uh, and I never thought it was thought all that important until recently. Uh, you know, I, I never really heard much of, of 107. I saw a big thing on the internet. You know, everybody was freaking out like, oh, we got to get this test. You know, if you're if we're going to be flying and this and that and never. And then there was the other half of people saying, no, don't worry about it. You know, th there's a they're kind of in a struggle trying to figure out the laws right now. Well, on that note. Uh, Say, uh, let, let, let's talk about uh, Hawaii for a second. You know, uh, there at Drone Worlds, I didn't hear much about about 107, but that was that that didn't mean that it wasn't there in play. Uh, what what happened was uh, there was there there was actually a, a couple of gents there that had their lights. They were they were totally licensed. They had their had they had their 107, and that's the only way we were able to have the event. Yeah, I saw that Koa. I saw that, you know, it was kind of the event organizer, and then there was a 107 guy and a visual observer for each one of you. So it was like three total people just for one racer, but they never told the racers about 107. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, because uh, I, I think it's such a new thing. Everybody was already freaking out. There was a lot of people that were that, that didn't really speak English all that well, and, oh. you know, it, it was a... It, 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 they 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 had they still whether or not they told everyone they were still complying with the way that things had to be run, and uh, I think I had heard that uh, uh, a person who retains a 107 license is able to basically watch over four people at a time. That's what I've heard. Wow. I don't I don't know if that's true, but that's just what I've heard, and that was at this past race in uh, at the Spaceport America, because we only had four racers at a time. So one one licensed holder. Could be could be there and 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 theoretically watch over those four drone racers. That's interesting because like as you'll learn when you take the test and use that study guide, it'll it'll talk about a visual observer okay. and how many drones can one person fly at a time, how many drones can be looked over. Because essentially, a visual observer is there to maintain the the seek and avoid function of being a pilot. And I think mm. that's why that fundamental reason right there is why FPV racing doesn't qualify under the model rules, the AMA rules. I know at this mm. last event, the AMA was there and the 107 yeah. FAA guys were there. So it was kind of like, well, why do you have both? Sure. You know. So that was really interesting to me. Um, but that being said, uh, so what are you doing now? You've seen all this 107 stuff. You've seen it kind of change in the industry. Do you think it's going to have an effect on racing as a whole? You uh, know, uh, as far as uh, what I'm seeing here in the in the states, 
absolutely the last two races that I've attended, it's been in play. Uh, so obviously it's here to stay. So what does that look like though? Like what, when you say it's in play, like what's changed? It means that we, so basically this is, I'm going to put it as simple as this. We were at the Spaceport America drone race and we were absolutely 100% unable to fly FPV until we had someone licensed there on the grounds with us. That would, you know, that was it. We had to, we had to sit around and wait. So obviously this is a law. Obviously, this is something that we're all going to have to jump on board with. Yes, it's new. It might, it might kind of freak people out and think, you know, and, and get people upset. But I've, I've said it before. It's education. So on that note, I have my study guide here. I know a couple of my buddies have already gotten, they've already gotten licensed. Education, knowledge, it's all good stuff. I've said that in the past. Big deal. Spend a week, couple of weeks studying. Educate yourself on something. Yeah. This is basically going to make sure that I understand. I know where, where to and where not to fly. Yeah, totally. And, and, uh, and this is just going to hold me accountable saying you have been educated on this. You know the rules. Now don't go break them. Yeah. No big deal. There's, there's people out there that right now can kind of, they could play like, well, I didn't know. I don't know. Well, now they're putting in rules. We're getting there as to it's just educate a, yeah, people. Yeah, it's just a matter of time until someone, like they come after someone or use yeah, yeah, enforcement yeah. against someone. And, uh, you know, I haven't seen any, anybody, any, anybody being prosecuted just yet. Uh, and maybe that's why we're not really seeing a push for you really need to get this license. But it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. it's re it's, and, and, you know, unfortunately for myself, I would probably be a good example, you know, someone to make an example of. You know, oh, yeah. Sean Taylor's out there flying without a license. Let's show exactly why you need to be licensed yeah and use me for for a a uh, you know a, a to, to demonstrate out of and i don't want that to happen and at the same time you know i i know that there's people looking up to me there's people that don't like me i'm sorry it's not <laughs> I, I i like you uh, but hey, as I, donald trump would say 50 percent like you 50 percent <laughs> hate you 100 percent knows you <laughs> yeah well it's, it's okay it's it, uh but at the same time you know the people that do are looking looking to me for guidance and for help which i al always want to do I want to try to lead by example. I'm not going to sit up here and preach, oh, yeah, just educate yourself and not do it. And I haven't done it for the last month, month and a half. I've been really busy, but this is going to take take a priority here really soon, and I am going to get licensed. Awesome. You know, I will say, by the way, I know you're you're using that study guide from us here at DroneU, and you're working on your class here, and you're going to start doing trainings mm -hmm. at the field here. Um, but one thing I do want to say just for you and for everyone else that's listening, the study guide is awesome. The test is going to educate you on where you can fly. But the test, you have to learn the language of the test. You have to know what the FAA is looking for in this test. This Got is kind of like a figuring out how they think and then answering their questions because they try to trip you up. They try to trick you. So when you do go through this, um, just for everyone out there, part of you know being a Drone U member is that you actually get a full nine-hour class like that gotcha. goes through everything That's cool. and it's taught the airspace and weather sections are taught by an FAA certified flight instructor so you actually get like the best information possible to learn airspace because it is a very very tricky thing um but all right so going back to this 107 and pilots the industry changing what it looks like um I think that you know, you said they're going to use someone as an example I think the FAA did that with the old commercial exemptions with Skypan, if you remember, there was that one point yes. nine million dollar fine, and that was kind of them coming out and saying we are going to enforce this. So I think that sure. you're right. It's just a matter of time. Um, let me ask you this though: a lot of people have said, you know, like, oh, this test is really hard and it costs one hundred and fifty dollars, and oh man, you know how many FPV parts I could buy for one hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> and that's so expensive. What do you have to say to that? Okay, well, there's a couple of things. Uh, I. So I, I don't I, I really don't know much about this yet. I don't want to sit, sit here and act like I do. I don't. I can I I've can heard, help. I'm sure. I'm sure. You. But I've heard I've heard a lot of people say there should be two versions of the test. There should be something for commercial operating, you know, drones, and there should be one for FPV drone racing. They like they're two separate things. That's what I've heard. I don't know if there's like if there's if there's, if there's, if there's stuff in there that's causing that. This is what I've heard. As far as the 150 bucks, you so you're get, saying you've heard that there should be there two. should be like like it would it would make more sense. Oh, because... there's a whole lot of things that are going to make more sense when you go through. Okay, that. okay, okay, <laughs> and some things that won't make any sense at all. I mean, like the, this test yeah. is a hodgepodge of <laughs> a, a, manned aviation questions, helicopter questions. Yeah, yeah. To I mean, like it was literally pulled there's, together last minute. I there's mean, it, there's guys tell. out there that have said that they would almost rather just go and to get their pilot's license. 
It's that. It's that. It it it, it is a difficult test, but. Anything's yeah. difficult if you don't actually put your mind to it. Like True. if you you need to actually just really sit down and study, take it serious, pass the test, and 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 don't just try to just just pass the test. Okay, and I got my card. Like take the information in. Yeah. Like think about it. Yeah. I don't think that they would have you learn this stuff if it wasn't important. You might need to use this stuff in the future. What if you just decide that you know what? Maybe I want to move on to something else in, with, that, that involves drones. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with drone racing. It's totally possible. What if drone racing actually becomes the gateway into that? Because exactly. more and more jobs are becoming drone jobs. Like mm -hmm. whether you work on a power pole yeah, exactly. or you work for cell phone infrastructure, like you're gonna end up using drones. You work yeah. for the fire service, as you know, because I just trained the Californians. You're gonna end up using drones. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like no matter the job, drones are a type of technology, just like cell phones, where it's a platform. I talk yeah. about this in my book, and I really think that everyone is going to be using drones, even the surveyors to the guys that are hanging ropes on the side of, like, yeah. you know, the, I've, I've the road it. to Taos. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean? Like, they could be used for hundreds and hundreds of tasks. Sure. That being said, if FPV racing became a funnel into that, I think – Hands down, that would be the smartest thing for any government agency, any corporate entity, or anyone to hire one of those guys. Mm -hmm. Now, it would be hard to find the right guy because some guys tend to pop off really hard, fast, if you know what I mean. But um, as far as control goes and maneuverability, I don't think you could find a better pilot it's, than it's, FPV it's racing. It's true. And, and, and I think what the issue is with, you know, FPV racing is so new still. You know, it's, it's a few years old. And uh, a lot of guys just think, oh, I've never done anything before, but I want to try this FPV racing. It looks like Star Wars racing. I want to do it. Boom, I'm racing. And they've never really thought about, hey, this could you could actually make this into a career doing something with this. It, it, may, not, it may not be drone racing, like you said. It may be drone racing. But you've made it into a career. I have. But it doesn't mean that I'm not open to new ideas in the future. Obviously, I really want to teach. And, mm -hmm. uh, and well, for, me, for me to teach, I need to have knowledge of this stuff. So that it, it for me it's 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 become important. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you are teaching here at Drone U. I know we've said it before. Uh, it's, it's it's happening, but you're also going to be doing in-person teaching yeah, the, on so a we're racetrack here at Drone U. Like that's going to be awesome, man. We're, we're ta you know that's we're in the works. I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of formulating a skeletal structure right now. That's awesome. And uh it's uh, it's not easy. It's uh, <laughs> I, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, oh man, this is this this is tough. Uh, uh, you know, my wife thankfully is is there helping me, and but uh, it, it's it's really really difficult. And uh, I have a couple of races coming up this weekend, and I'm, I'll be going to Korea here really soon. So uh, it's it's hard to focus on because I have to give 100 percent to something like this. You know, I can't just oh I'll think about this and I'll brainstorm and write some ideas down. No, I got to really sit down and think about how to do this. And I'm, I I want to make this to where. It works, and everybody has a good time, and 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 you know it, it goes in a circular motion. Everybody has to be happy in the end. So I'm I, I'm, I'm trying to formulate the, you know a plan on how to do that, and it's just not as easy as as you would expect, as, as you would think. I think empathize with you, my friend. Building the course <laughs> or drone you on the cinema side of stuff, yeah. like I, I empathize with you. And for me, it was like breaking down what people actually had to learn to do overall, mm -hmm. and then breaking that down into. What drills can I teach them? And then what are the biggest hiccups? How do I get them past these hiccups? Sure. You know, so, I mean, that's kind of how I broke it down. And it took me a while to build the course sure. that you saw out there because that integrates every yeah. single practice drill that, that we have. So gotcha. it looks simple from, from the start. But once you integrate all the different, you know, uh, pr practice patterns and whatnot, it's sure, a whole lot. Sure. But Oh, it was what? amazing watching you do it line of sight. It was just it was amazing. I had a hard time going through the straightaway. <laughs> it really is. It, you know what? Cool. We got to do a video sometime. I was saying this last night, like where you're flying a Phantom line of sight through the course, oh, and then man. I try to fly a racer through the course. Because for a lot of you guys that don't know, I I don't fly FPV racing, and I really want to. It's just a matter of time. It's going to happen really soon. Yeah, so I'm going to be your test subject yep. for the class. Yeah, so. perfect. So the class is going to start off at safety. We have to, and, and it's going to be legitimate safety stuff. And we'll just go beginner. Beginner will lead into advanced. Advanced will lead into expert. I would and love to see some uh, some training. I don't know if you've all seen the old like Ebonics language training. It's kind of like a joke, but I would love to see some violence obstruction training, like how to calm down an angry bystander, because you are the king of that. You know, I, I 
I may have been on that day. I've definitely had bad days, and uh, I, I need to I need to keep myself in check with that. But yeah, that's definitely something that we will. Well, from we'll what for I sure saw, cover. you handle angry people really well. <laughs> well thank so, you, thank you. And I mean, that guy was like, "So what's stopping me from going in the path of your drone?" It's like, well, the cones that are up that say get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, know. and 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 right now. It's it's hard because we don't have a designated s- space really to to fly you know FPV quadcopters, Not and yet. Uh, and we're That's hoping to change that. That's yeah. a secret. Yeah, we're hoping that we're hoping that we could find a place eventually somewhere to be able to do this. Oh, or so. build one. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great too. Yeah. <laughs> well, luckily we got that in the works. So yeah. anyway, well, Sean, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I really couldn't say thank you oh, enough. Yeah, and no, really, and the fact that, you know, you trust us to train you, we appreciate it. The fact that your, your focus on safety and responsibility, you know, that's what we're all about. And the fact that you're the best, I think it really says a lot to other people out there. That one of, one of... Seeing that humble, that humbleness, that, that, that's <laughs> why, that's why we, you know, we're happy to have you as an instructor here, man. So. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askadroni.com. If you have FPV related questions for Sean, go to askadroni.com. Just upload them there. That's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks again for listening in.